Get on your feet. It's time for the impossible shot. The impossible shot.
the game. So I need three boys and three girls. Christian life. Plus, we get to cook some really good food. My guest today is someone who needs no introduction. Oh, okay. Needs no introduction because I am Ima somebody. Everybody knows me. Well, I don't think my viewers know who you are, so can you tell us something about yourself? Well, that's easy. I could talk about myself all day. My name is Ima somebody. I'm the best cook in the world. Wait, best in the world? Yes. Have you ever heard of Emeril Lagasse, Martha Stewart, Paula Dean? Yes, of course I have. Losers. They're all losers. They make the entire cooking industry look bad. That's not very nice to say. Well, their food is not very nice to eat. Mine, however, is the best. Okay, well, what are you going to prepare for us today? I had a hard time deciding since all of my dishes are so amazing. But I thought that today would be a good day for some chocolate cake. Actually, from the sound of it, today would be a good day for some humble pie. Excuse me? Humble pie? Who makes that? 
It can be any good since I'm not the one who's making it. Well, eating humble pie is more of an expression. It means you're getting a little humility. Humility? Yes, humility. Humility is a very important ingredient in a healthy Christian life. Humility is something that Christians need because if you're not humble, then you're full of pride. Well, I am full of pride. I'm proud of being the best. I can see that, but that's not the way that God wants us to carry ourselves. He doesn't want us to act like we're better than everyone else. He wants us to be humble and treat others as better than ourselves. Well, what good would that do? A lot of good. When people see that we are humble, then they are more likely to listen to us when we tell them about Jesus. They can know that we are sinners who have been saved by God's grace, not perfect people who have no problems. Hmm, I haven't really been acting humble, have I? Not really, but the good thing is that God can help you, just like he helped King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar? King Nebuchadnezzar. There's a story in the Bible about how prideful he was, and something really crazy happened to him before he eventually gained the humility that God wanted him to have. Well then why are we wasting time here? I want to hear this story. Okay, well it looks like that's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below, and if you want to see more videos like this one, please hit the subscribe button. I'm Ivana Cook, and I'll see you next time as we learn another important ingredient of a healthy Christian life here on Soul Food. What's up, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's me, VSKI to the double T L E F. Skittles in the hizzy. And I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking all about being humble. So every time today somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Gotta stay humble, got to pray, and God will heal our land today. The world is a messed up place. People need Jesus, but we can't show them Jesus if we're all puffed up with pride and full of ourselves. No way. We gotta be humble so that God can use us to change the world. It's not about us, baby. It's about him. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Gotta stay humble, got to pray, and God will heal our land today. And that is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I am living for my savior. Skin out Walking around in the grass, acting like an animal. For a, yeah. 
for seven years. Seven years. And so he went to Daniel and he said, what does this mean? And Daniel told him, well, King, it actually means you. You are going to be the one that is going to be put out in the land, going to be on your hands, on your knees like a cow. Guess what? Your fingernails are going to grow like claws. Your hair is going to turn into feathers. All this is going to happen to you. And so King Nebuchadnezzar says, oh, man, that's not going to happen to me. Look at all this land that I've done. Look at all these cool things that I've done. And Daniel said, what do you think he told him? He told him to be humble. He said, King, if I may interject and if I may say something to you, I would recommend that you follow that direction and repent and say, I have forsaken my land and I have forsaken you, Lord, that I should, give, uh, I should, I should repent and be, uh, apologize. And so um, Daniel said, well, maybe if you do that, God will be merciful and he'll keep you where you are. And he said, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. As, as he went out into his beautiful palace, he said, look at all the things that I've done. Look at all this cool, all these uh, beautiful buildings, this land. Everything's going great. Look at what all that I have done. He's like, that's not going to happen. Well, did you know, at that time, God said, Kim ne Kim ne King ne Nebuchadnezzar, guess what? I'm going to remove you from your palace. You're going to go into the uh, fields. You're going to eat grass like a cow, be covered in dew. Uh, do all over your body. You're going to have to be out there for seven years. And just like that, he was sent out there. God did what he said he was going to do based on his dream. And so, for seven years, King Nebuchadnezzar lived out in the fields like an animal. Would you want to be like a cow? A yes. So he learned to be what? Humble. 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 Do you know what the word humble means? What does it mean? No? What does it mean, Alabama? That's a good word. Not self-centered. Anybody just want to add on to that? Yeah? What, what do you want to say? Uh, to not be selfish. Not be selfish. Good word. Anything else? Not all about yourself. Yeah, not be prideful. If you ever met somebody that's all about themselves, I'm prideful. I did that. I did that. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar was like. And God humbled him, took him out of his palace, dropped him in the field, and said, here you go, seven years, and then put him back once he recognized that. So he didn't really turn into a cow, but he essentially lived like a cow and he ate grass. Yeah, for seven years. What about there? Maybe dirt too, I don't know. Doesn't want to tell us the Bible. What's that? Maybe, maybe. So let's go ahead and uh, find a little bit more about our power verse today with Disco Dan. Alright, it's time for the power verse with Disco Dan. Groove. Everybody, Disco Dan here. You know what it's time to do? It's time to get your groove on and learn today's power verse. Today's power verse says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Ooh, great job, everybody. You can take a seat. You know, me being a dancer as I am, sometimes it's really easy for me to think I got it all going on and that I can handle myself. But that's just plain wrong. 
What I need to do is I need to humble myself and pray and seek God like never before and make sure I'm always running from that dirty sin. And when I do that, I can experience all that God has for me. And that's what you need to do too. You know what else you need to do? You need to stand up to your feet and say the power verse with me. Come on, everybody in the room, stand up, stand up, and let's say the power verse together on the count of three. One, two, three. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Ooh, great job, everybody. You can take a seat. All right, now I hate to bum you out, but Disco Dan's gotta fly. I'll see you next time we learn another groovy power verse. Until then, I'm Disco Dan, and I am out of sight. Whoa! <laughs>
That's not what the Bible tells us to do. We must humble ourselves and make God number one in our lives. Well, how do we actually do that? Okay? A couple things. One, you got to recognize you don't have all the answers. And let me tell you this. Your parents don't have all the answers either. Your teachers don't have all the answers either. Or anybody in the world. Who has all the answers? Not me. Me. God has all the answers. He knows everything. He's in charge. We don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to know everything. But sometimes we do. And we really try hard to say, I know it all. But that's not true. That's not what happens. So God knows it all. And it's okay because he does and even if we don't. Okay? That's the first one. The second one is we want to actually go ahead and worship. So when we worship, you guys know we sing songs, right? Go to church. That's worshiping. That's great. And so when we raise our hands in worship or even bow our knees in worship, we recognize that um, give him the glory and glorify him in all that he has done. So even today in our worship song, that's how we humble ourselves. Say, God, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to worship you anyway. And that's what we have to do. All right? So that's the first one, that I need to humble myself. The second one is I must go ahead and seek God's face. Does that really mean what it says, seek his face? Do you know what he looks like? No. I don't either. <laughs> we don't have all the answers behind that. But we must seek his face. Well, here's a couple things. When you seek his face, it actually talks about that you got to know who and where to ask. So, for instance, if you had a question in school, who would you ask? Your teacher. Your teacher. No. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question, especially on a math problem. What about if you're playing a, in a baseball game and you have a question, or like a batting question, who would you ask? Uh, your coach. Right? You ask yourself because you know it all? Remember? We don't. we got to ask somebody else. Or what about if we want to play a game? So, I don't know, have you ever played this game? And you're like, no. So, I was like, here, play this game. Okay. okay. Well, how do you find out how to play the game? We use your brain. But if I don't know how to play, i got to read the instruction manual, right? So, we, you know, 
we're not going to hang out. We're not going to be, you know, close. Would that work? No. If he's my best friend, would, would I need to spend time with him? Yeah, and maybe ask him what? Question. Question. So, Hudson, what school are you going to? Carrollton. Hudson, what's your dad's name? I knew that. I'm, I work with his dad. Uh, Hudson, what's your favorite candy? The Crunch Chocolate. Just FYI. You want to bring it to me?
about not being it my way or not having all my answers or doing what I want to do? How can I see God's face? How can I pray a little bit more? And what areas, Lord, do I need to uh, run and turn away from sin? How can I do better with that for you today? So let's take a few minutes and go with the Lord in prayer.